In this video, we are going to continue learning about the manipulation of page list properties. Here, I will focus on these special keywords known as symbolic indexes. Let's start simple. When we refer to an item within a page list, we can use a numeric index, for example, 1, 2, 3. Now, these symbolic indexes that I just mentioned allow us to refer dynamically to specific positions of a page list to either modify or add new items. For example, append adds a new item at the end of the page list. On the other hand, if you want to add an item at the start of the page list, sliding all the existing items one spot over, you can use prepend. Any item added will be on the first position. Now, what about if you want to modify the last item, but you don't know the index of that item? For this scenario, you will be using the symbolic index last. If you want to modify the first item, you can use the numeric index one. Now, in case you are looping through a page list and you want to refer to the current item, you can use the index current. Also, if within a loop you need to get the current index, you can use the property py for each count from the parameter page. Lastly, if you want to add an item in between others, you can use the index insert followed by the numeric index where the new item should be inserted. With this, all the other items starting at that position will be moved one spot over. Okay, so this is the first step of the new stage that we created. As you can see, we have one empty item in our page list for guest page list. This is added because of a data transform that gets run every time a new case gets created. That transform is called py set field defaults. So what I'm going to do is to disable this step. Uh, when you disable a step, it will not run, it's the same as deleting it. But you have the option as a developer to still have all the logic there if you want to enable a step again. But for now, I'm going to leave it disabled. So now, if I create a new case, I should have an empty guest page list. Okay, now I'm going to show you these symbolic indexes, how they work, and we are going to give an example for each one. So to show this, I'm going to be creating a data transform that will be running on the post processing of this flow action of the login. Let me open this flow action. And here on action, on the post processing, where we apply a data transform, I'm going to create a new data transform. Name it load count information. And let's start simple. Let's start with the numeric indexes. So for my guest page list, at position one, I'm going to add a new item and I'm going to set the first name value property to Daniel. Uh, by the way, if your page list is empty, you cannot add at the second or third or any position. You have to start with the number one. It's the same if you have only five items and you say that you want to add a tenth item, it will not work. So start with, with one and now you can add also a second item.
So here we have two items. Let's save the data transform over here. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to move from the guest information from this stage to the previous stage and then go back. That way, my data transform will be run when I'm done with this step. So here, I'm going to go to Actions, Change Stage. Let's go to Authentication on Stage Before. This step is the one that has that post-processing data transform that we just created. So I should see two items added to my page list. And yeah, they are here. Okay, now I'm going to show you the symbolic indexes append and repend. So whenever you are going to use these symbolic indexes, those go in between the greater than and less than characters. So here to say append. And here I'm going to say repend. So remember, append will add to the end of the list and repend will add to the beginning of the list. So if I do what I just did, I should have four items. I should have my two original items plus the append that I'm doing and the prepend that I'm doing. Okay, let's go back. Okay, see, repent adds to the front, append adds to the end. Okay, so now if you want to modify the first item, you can do it using the number one. But if you want to modify the last item, you don't know how many items there are, you can use last. So this is the first item. And this is going to be the last item. So this is only modifying, it is not adding anything to the page list. Okay. Now, if you want to add a new item, add some place that is not the beginning or the end, you can use the keyword insert. So for example, if I want to add something in the middle of my page list, then I need to use the keyword insert followed by the position where I want to add that new item. So if I want an item here, I have to use insert for the position tree, and then it will add that item here, and everything starting at that position Will be moved one spot over. So I'm going to use insert, the position is going to be three, and and let's test. Okay, now the last thing that I'm going to show you is current. And for current, as the word, we need to be in a loop. So I'm going to change the action to for each page in. We are going to iterate through the page list. And I'm going to copy the information from the same item where we are currently positioned at, get the value for the first name into the last name. So I'm going to say last name is equal to my page list. The position is current and the property is first name. So that should copy, so that should iterate through each item in the page list and copy its first name over here to the last name. Now, 
this current um, that keyword is not really useful here in a data transform because we can achieve the same output just checking this checkbox just the properties from that same page list over here but that's pretty much the same but that current uh, keyword is really useful in some more complex activities we haven't covered the activity rules but we will soon do that now one last thing that you might want to know about in the future is how do we know in which iteration we are currently at so how do i know uh, when i'm at position one two three four five well you can do it with this property which is in the bottom page whenever you are looping through a page list so you write param dot by for each count so this will give you the number of the iteration you are currently doing so if i do this i should save that number in last name so when i come back i should have one two three four five here okay so i think that's it for all the symbolic indexes what i'm going to do now is to to have the first and the last name of the user that got authenticated in the in this stage to be shown here so if i go to clipboard my by work page if i expand it go to the account page i can see that i have the username and the password but i don't have the first and the last name that is still in our data page which is in data pages thread and the account username and password so here if i expand and i go to px results i check the first result i shall have that information there so what i'm going to do is to copy the first and the last name into our account page so that and then i'm going to copy that account page information into the first item of the guest page list okay let's do it so first step update the account page with values from this from this um, data page. So we need to add it in our pages and classes. The class is HBA booking data account and let's remember that here we need two parameters value one and value two value one is for the username value two is for the password Okay, so where do we have the username and the password i go to my clipboard open account page i have it there so account page dot username and password account page username account page password and then so this is our uh, data page. We want to access the first result. So PX results, one, first name and last name. So we need to access PX results. PX results, one. 
So now I should have access to the properties of that first result. So let's set first name equal to first name and last name equal to last name. Now let's add a second step and let's update the first page of our guest page list. So first name will be equal to the values in our account page, first name we copy it over here and the same for the last name okay so this is important to understand this is saying that uh, pretty much the uh, that these two properties first name and last name are not defined that means that they don't exist. Uh, the reason that this is happening is because we are dealing with a page list. I'm sorry, not a page list, but a data page of type list. Here, I open this page list property, the type or the object class is code Pega list. And as you can see, the properties within this page list are other type of properties that we have not worked with before. And our results really, what we what we care about are in the page PX results. So if I click here, you will see that we have the properties that we need, and the object class is HBA booking count. So here we have two types of pages. This is the main page, which is of type code pega list, and then we have this other page, which is of type uh, the, the type of data type that we need. To fix this issue, you have to go to pages and classes and ensure that you are accessing or you are using the correct page name. So yes, this is our data page. But the page name reality is PX results. Let's try again. And that works. I know it's a bit confusing, but that's how you have to do it when you are dealing with the data pages of type list. You access the data page and then you access PX results where the information that you need is. Yes. Okay. Let's see if this works. So my data page is empty. Let's go back to authentication. Logging in with this username, this password. And here we have it. And if I open the clipboard, I should have my account page with the first name and the last name. First name and last name. Yeah, that works. In the next video, we are we are going to continue working with the next step, which is apply promo code. Here we are going to create the records for data type for the promo codes so that the user can enter some code and then we can apply a discount on their total. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.